Justice Toll, let me begin with you. If you were uh, introducing uh, Judge Childs to the Senate Judiciary Committee for her confirmation hearing, what would you want the committee to know about her? I certainly uh, want uh, the committee to know of her uh, extremely uh, brilliant career uh, as a student of the law, uh, as well as uh, her strong work ethic uh, and her demeanor and outreach to all who participate in the court system, the lawyers, the litigants, the court personnel. Uh, she is uh, a real standout in any of the judges that I've supervised in the many years I was Chief Justice of South Carolina. Uh, Kiyosha Dickey, uh, clerks, law clerks have a unique perspective on judges. Uh, what did you learn about Judge Childs in that position that you would want uh, the Senate to know? Well, I want the Senate to know that she is very deliberate in her decision making and she's meticulous. Um, when we had oral arguments at the state court level, she made sure to take written notes and they would go into you know her case file and she made sure before she signed any order that she put her hands on every single piece of paper in that case file. She is a high level thinker um, and she also just you know really wants litigants like she had said to have the opportunity to have their time in court whether you're a pro se plaintiff or whether you're you know a defendant with a team of lawyers behind you. Each party is going to have equal time in front of her. Uh, Justice Toll, uh, what do you think explains uh, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham and Republican Senator Tim Scott's support for Judge Childs? I think they know her well. Uh, they know how balanced uh, a thinker uh, she is and how uh, fair a judge she is. Uh, I also think they know what across the board strength she has and the people who know her best are uh, here in South Carolina. Uh, for someone to have both the support of the president of the South Carolina AF of LCO uh, and his organization who've uh, strongly endorsed her to President uh, Biden and at the same time enjoy the support of many in the business community speaks to uh, a person and a judge who is not just appears fair, but is fair to everyone who appears before her. And I think that's what they're looking for, is someone that strikes that uh, broad base of confidence. Uh, the Washington Post uh, just had this uh, description of the highlights of some of her rulings. In 2014, she ruled that a South Carolina couple's out-of-state same-sex marriage must be recognized in the state a full year before the U.S. Supreme Court legalized the practice nationwide. In 2020, she ruled against a South Carolina requirement that absentee voters have their ballots signed by a witness, citing the pandemic. Last year, Childs rejected a request by employees at a power company to invalidate a mandate that they get a coronavirus vaccine. And Kiyosha Dickey, having uh, worked with Judge Childs on some of her opinions, uh, what what else do you expect to be cited in her confirmation hearing, both by her supporters and by people who will be criticizing her judgments? Well, Lawrence, I can't really speak to any specific you know cases that may that may be cited, but I know that you know her supporters and even um, you know anyone can really tell you that no matter what case is set before her, she's going to have the facts, she's going to have the law of the land as it is at that moment, and she's going to apply the law to the facts. There is no, no grandstanding, there's no extraneous um, opinions that may come into play. Like Justice Toll said, she is fair and she is practical and she's going to take, you know, like I said, whatever facts she has and the law that's in place and apply those laws to the facts. And uh, Justice Toll, we, we don't often see uh, any longer uh, uh, judges go from the district court all the way up to the Supreme Court. They're usually coming from the Circuit Court of Appeals. Specifically, the D.C. Circuit Court of Appeals seems to supply most of them. Uh, what, what is your sense of Judge Child's readiness to go from the trial court all the way to the top United States Supreme Court? 
Well, I don't think there's any question she's ready, but you know, it, uh, we should remember that the last uh, president of the United States who did not have an Ivy League background before uh, President Biden was Ronald Reagan. And in his second uh, uh, run for the presidency for re-election, uh, he promised that if he were re-elected, he would appoint a woman to the United States Supreme Court. He reached down to the Intermediate Appellate Court of Arizona uh, to pick Sandra Day O'Connor. And she was strongly backed by her senator, one of his principal supporters, Senator Barry Goldwater. Uh, she dispelled the idea that uh, there's only one track and only one kind of education that fits you for uh, a place on the United States Supreme Court. And she ended up being not only the first of her gender, but one of the consummate uh, uh, peacemakers uh, and uh, 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 her uh, ability to get along and bring people together on that court and build consensus is unparalleled in the history of our United States Supreme Court. So I'd say Michelle fits that kind of profile.